Hi, my name is Amanda. Hi, my name is Roxas. And, and this, this is our M&M assignment, assignment video. As we all know, macroeconomy can be quite depressing and sometimes quite boring also. So today, we are totally going to avoid all the depressing stuff and skip right to the fun part. Full employment, not everyone will have a job. How nice! So not everyone is going to have a job? In fact, as of Q3 of 2011, our country's unemployment rate is at 3.1% of our labour force. That means approximately 390,000 people do not have jobs. I guess that's what economics is called the dismal science. Zero here. Children who are 15 years old or younger, people who did household work, the old and disabled, those who have not made any specific effort to look for work in the past 4 weeks, and finally, those who belong to an institution such as school, and the others who are not mentioned in the list just now, are considered a part of the labor force. To be considered unemployed, a person must be 16 years old and above, willing and able to work but are not working, available for work, and has made specific effort to find work over the past four weeks. So, among the unemployed, we can divide them into even smaller categories based on the type of the unemployment, such as Fictional unemployment, which refer to those new entry into the job market and the people who become unemployed when they quit their old job just long enough to look for and find another one. to those people who lost their job when their skill is no longer needed to due to the advancement of technology. Hey girls, you want to buy Like this. The Dow traders are standing there watching in amazement. 676 points down. Dow, not so focused on OPEC. Kirby in Chicago, where today traders were using words previously forbidden. Panic, crash, free fall, meltdown, as the Standard and Poor's 500 future fell and fell and fell. What interesting is, did you know that cyclical unemployment does not exist before the Industrial Revolution? So how did the Industrial Revolution create the cyclical unemployment? In pre-industrial farming society, cyclical unemployment does not exist because farmers did not receive salary. Their income is based on their profit. If they can harvest a lot of crops, their income will be high. And if they only harvest a little, their income will be low. This flexibility to income means that when economic activity fluctuated, people's income fell or rise. <gasps> but they get to keep on working. Then the industrial revolution happened and it changed the nature of work. People started working in factory for a fixed amount of income. Since the salary is no longer flexible, during economic recession, factory owners may sack some of their workers. 
hence giving birth to the cyclical unemployment phenomenon. And cyclical unemployment eventually becomes a big problem for the government because it affects society on a much larger scale. Just imagine, for a person to be affected by cyclical unemployment, he must first give up his old job or he must be a new entrant. Since nobody stays a new entrant forever, as long as you don't suka suka quit your job, right, you should be okay. And as for a person affected by structural unemployment, one can easily take time out to learn about newer technologies to adapt to the new environment. This won't be easy, but at least they can still find a job. But for cyclical unemployment, Work opportunities across all industries will decrease in number during the economic recession. There is no other way out, and that is unacceptable. Which is why the government is given the responsibility to regulate the business cycle and to control cyclical unemployment. Let's look at the business cycle of the United States. Notice that since the Korean War, the business cycle has become more stable and fluctuated lesser. This is a prime example of how the government regulation can play an important role in stabilizing the economy. And when the cyclical unemployment is zero, the government then has successfully created a condition called full unemployment. So, what is full employment? Full employment is the economic condition when all the people are willing and able to work are able to find unemployment. And this is important that we have to remember when economists talk about full employment, they didn't really mean 100% of them are employed. This is due to unemployment doesn't take consideration in frictional and structural unemployment because they are avoidable and it's out of government control. Okay, it's not like the government can stop you from creating a job and stop technology from advancing, right? Okay, back to our full employment. Economists initially regard that 2% of unemployment rate as full employment, but over the years it has increased to 4 to 6%. And as the unemployment rate increases, people find it harder and harder to justify its name full employment. As of January 2013, Malaysia is experiencing full employment, where approximately 434,000 Malaysians are unemployed, which is also equal to 3.3% of unemployment rate. The problem here is that the word fool can be misleading. So they come up with names such as natural rate of unemployment, target rate of unemployment, and also NIRO, which stand for non accelerating inflation rate of unemployment. Let's get to Chuck. NIRO, what a horrendous term. So, one may ask, what makes the natural rate of unemployment increase? Simple. Social and technological change. As more women enter the workforce, more families become more income family. So when a person loses their job, they can still be supported by their spouse. This allows them to have more time and be pickier when choosing a new job. <coughs> Hence, frictional unemployment increase. As technology are also improving, structural unemployment will also increase. When these two types of unemployment increase, this makes the natural rate of unemployment increase. So, we can conclude that natural rate of unemployment is actually equal to frictional <coughs> unemployment rate plus structural unemployment rate. Okay, so let's pass back to Roxas and Amanda. Now let's take a look at Malaysia's unemployment rate and see how well our country is doing in this regard. As you can see, Malaysia's unemployment rate is well below the natural rate of unemployment. This means we have actually achieved full employment. Yay! We hope that you learned something today. And thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs>